Good morning from Jerusalem. Guys, we are on top of Mount of Olives. Do -do -do. And look how beautiful is that garden. But that garden is one of the most important places in the Christian world. When St. Helen came to Jerusalem at the 4th century, she built four churches. Two of them are in Jerusalem. It shows you how important those places were. One of them you know by heart. This is the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. This is the place that Jesus was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. The second one is Aluana. Mm, you didn't hear about that church. True. Maybe you heard about Pater Nuster, which is a, the crusader name of their church? No. Still, this is the second place that she built uh, a church in Jerusalem. It shows you that in the 4th century, this place that we are visiting now is important. What's happened here? According to St. Helen and the 4th century, at least the beginning of it, from that place, Jesus ascended into heaven. From that place, he taught all the disciples all the secrets of uh, Christianity. Aha! Now it sounds more interesting, isn't it? Uh, sadly, only few places of small uh, more remains uh, remain from the 4th century church because that church been destroyed uh, by the person at the 7th century and then rebuilt again by the crusader. That one been destroyed by Salahadin and only in the 19th century they started to build the church again. That what you see here is mainly the 19th century church. Still, it's not a church. Still, it's a story. Um, and EJ, Betty, this is for you as well. And just like you asked me, I'm blessing the Jerusalem cross here at the church for you. And I will send it to you as you already know. And uh, if you want me to do that, enter to my... Um, buy me a coffee site uh, or link. You will find the link at uh, the description of that video. And, um, and then you will understand how to do the same thing. Uh, I, I have no, sadly I have no tourist and you are my family now, you are my tourist. Then in that case, let me show you the remains from the fourth century church. And what are those plates? What are those messages in so many uh, um, languages? Wait, 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 wait a minute, please. Mm, you can see the mosaic floor from 4th century. Now, why it's so empty? COVID-19, remember? It's still... Uh, it's still here. It's still, it still exists. Although the rumors say that in the next month, uh, tourists will enter to, to, uh, to Jerusalem, to uh, the Holy Land, to Israel, but there will be a lot of uh, uh, problems with it. Then wait with your tickets. Um, the church that you see here was built by the um, at the 19th century by the Susian, you will see her tomb, again, her tomb. Uh, I'm talking about women power. Um, but at the shape of the, well, uh, on the 4th century church, they were looking for the most important place that were mentioned by so many pilgrims who came to here in the 4th century, the cave. The cave that Jesus taught the disciples everything about Christianity, about his way. Um, the place that they actually asked him, what's 
when are you going to come back again? And he told them, before, don't ask me that, and before it will happen, so many bad things will happen, earthquake, uh, wars, um, uh, people will uh, deny you, and so on and so on and so on. Then we believe, at least in the 4th century, people believed that this is the place that Jesus actually been in. Um, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, most of his time. Can you understand the, uh, the energy? Can you understand it? And when they started to build it, two things happened. First of all, uh, the money ran off. There's no money anymore. Then they kept it like that. And when they built the altar, they actually discovered the cave and suddenly they destroyed a little bit. But we're going to enter to that cave soon. Let's follow the Jerusalem cross. If you don't know what is the Jerusalem cross, the main cross is um, the center of the word Jerusalem. And the four other crosses can be the four gospels, earth, the fire, whatever you want. But the most important thing is uh, that Jerusalem is the center. It was so important that the bishops, until the seventh century, were. Uh, Buried here, not at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Here, in that place. Then, it's not only Jesus been here. What about the disciples? They were here too. Today, some of that place belongs to the Carmelite order. And they vow not to speak. At least not to me. And from that window, they are actually sitting and praying. Because they know, just like you know now, that this is the most important place in their church. Now what you see here is part of the cave. And you can see the apps facing to the east. And what I want to imagine is that Jesus standing right there. The disciples are around him, just like we are now. And in front of you can see the, some of the tombs um, of the bishops. Sadly, some of those tombs have been destroyed. From that area, you could see beautifully uh, the temple and Jerusalem, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I know that you want to know what are those messages. Can you wait, please? Can you wait? Thank you. In the 12th century, the Crusaders built here a church that dedicated to Pater Nuster, a father who is in heaven, the Lord's Prayer. All right, now you can understand that you will find here the Lord's pray in so many languages and dialogue. And we're going to visit um, the English one. But prepare your prayer. I'm sure that you know it by heart. Because I will read it for you. Betty, are you listening to it? In Hebrew and Aramite. Da -da -da. Then this is the tomb of the Danish guy at the Crusader time who donated the money for the Crusader church, for Pater Nuster. Um, before we will enter to the cloister, cloister, let us walk around here. And this is especially for you. If you are Catholic, you have no problem with the churches. If you are not Catholic, this is the place to stay. Look at the olive trees. Some of them are very old. This is the place to wonder, meditate, to connect, between, to connect with God. I mean, it's so easy.
I love the church. Sadly, it was closed for so many months. I didn't visit that church for more than a year, actually almost two years. And now it's partly open, only for a few hours a day. Although they made a major mistake and they planted trees at the viewpoint, let me tell you that the, behind that beautiful olive trees is the, um, the temple, it is Jerusalem. You might see a little bit of the Dome of the Rock. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it because it is shining. Let me. Do you see something shining here? Then this is the Dome of the Rock. This is the side of the temple. And don't worry, don't worry. I will take you to see the view of Jerusalem later on. Later on. But now let's go to the cloister. Look how beautiful is the view from here. Must take a picture. Almost every every picture here it's a postcard. We're gonna visit the cloister, which is amazing. Um, I will read it for you in uh, Hebrew um, and Aramite. That place belongs to the French. And uh, although in most of the churches you don't need to pay, here there's an anxious fee, but not a lot of money. It's like 10 shekels or something like that. The cloister is uh, similar to the cloister of Pisa, Italy. Italian, Maltese, Alman, Samaritan. Look how beautiful it is. If you ask me, let them leave the church like that. Partly nature, partly church. It's stronger for me. Portuguese, Sanskrit, India. But we are going to the Hebrew part. In Hebrew, not like in, um, not in, uh, like in, uh, English, we are writing from right to left. Let me leave it here, but let me not forget it. Then it started from uh, the right and up. You know it by heart, but if not, remember, you were supposed to prepare yourself for that. If not, stop the video for a minute. Then, now you're ready. Avinu asher bashamayim. Amen. That was in Hebrew. Soon you will hear me saying the same prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in English. And here is the Arabic version and the Latin version. And before we will enter to the, uh, before we will read the, um, The other one, Aramite. Let's enter to the chapel of that church. And that chapel 
um, the nuns of the um, of the Carmelite are praying. I cannot enter with my hat on. Remember this, you see? The bossy, sorry, the bossy. For me, she is so important and because it shows us the power of the women in Christianity. And today I will uh, prepare another video of Mary Magdalene in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. For me, Mary Magdalene, he, she is the one. A little bit even more than the disciples. Because she had been with Jesus from A to Z. She didn't even leave him when he was on the cross. And she is the first one who went to visit him. Um, let's go in. I cannot talk inside that church. It's always felt. What is makes me happy is that Brian Great, isn't it? In English and Hebrew. As well. Spanish. French. We reach the English version, but he actually knows it, and here it is. And the other side of the English version is the Aramite. I know Aramite mainly because it's very close to Hebrew. And when you're studying to be tour guide, it's part of it. Part of the Jewish prayers are in Aramite. Part of the Bible is in Aramite as well. Again, just like in Hebrew, uh, we are reading it from right to left. Let me put my head on. Abuna de Beshmaya, it Kadash Shimcha, Tete Malchutcha, Yehu Tsivimcha, Kama Bishmaya, Kanama Bera, Avlan Lachma, Vemastana Beoma, Veshavak Lam Hovi, Kema, Achem Shavkana Lhibi, Vahalt Halen Lissiona, Ella Pizza Hitten Min Bisa, and now the word that you know is Amen. Beautiful place, isn't it? Oh, Thai, Finland, Korean, Spaniel. Such an amazing place. At the end of the fourth century, um, the tradition that Jesus ascended into heaven from here moved to the highest place of Mount of Olives, and what left here is 
the cave itself. And that is where Jesus um, told the disciples everything. One of them was, of course, as you know already, of uh, the Lord's Prayer. And I want you to see where we are. Then don't go away. Stay here. Until we go outside, let me tell you that if you want to um, talk to me, ask me questions, you can do it via YouTube or at the description you will find my um, professional um, Facebook and Instagram. And of course, uh, buy me coffee if you want to support me, which I must tell you, that tour is because of that support. Um, I'm not working, I'm not getting a penny from the government, there are no tourists in Israel yet. Such an amazing place, isn't it? And still it's not the end. But let us look at the two names of the church. Aluana, Mount of Olives, which is the original name of uh, the 4th century by St. Helen. And Paternoster, it's the uh, Crusader name. We are at El Shah. I know that it's only in Arabic and Hebrew here. Sadly, it's not in English, but it's at the Mount of Olives. And everyone knows where he is, um, where is uh, um, the church. And it's not a problem. Every uh, bus can take you. Bus 48 took me to here. And um, every taxi driver knows where we are. But this is part of um, Palm Sunday. For me then can you see that taxi that now arriving if you will continue that way let's say 20 minutes walking we will reach the other side of Mount of Olives and we will reach Betfagi Betfaj that's where he climbed on the donkey and entered to Jerusalem then this is Palm Sunday procession from for us and this is the highest place of uh, that um, amount of olives and from the end of 4th century another lady decided or not decided uh, discovered that the other place that we are now heading will be um, it is the place that he ascended into heaven. And from the end of the 4th century, and yeah, the church was built at the beginning of the 5th century, everyone worshipped that story, that event there. Sadly, that church being destroyed by Saleh um, in the 12th century, being destroyed, and now it's a mosque. For some of us, it's a little bit problematic to enter to a mosque to pray. But let me tell you that there are, there is a, it's not free, but it costs money, but they are really love to see Christians are praying there. And um, every, every day, the day of the ascension, every year, Catholic, Greek Orthodox, um, the Cyrenic Church, Copts, are going there and have right to pray and to have ceremonies, then don't say no. It's called the Chapel of the Ascension. Then let's visit it for a few minutes. It's open. It will cost you five shekels. 
יותר? מרד אוף אוליב, צ'אפל הוב, דה אסנצ'ן. מה שלומך? That was the gatekeeper, he saw me. And because I'm a tour guide, I can't go without paying a penny. Yay! I saved one dollar, one and a half dollar. Surprisingly, I might be the only one here. And not surprisingly, I am. <laughs> Now, the Byzantine church was as big as that. You see the columns of the Byzantine church. It was made of three uh, round. Three circles. And the first one was a fan. And the idea that the center uh, will be the ascension part you can see the remains of the Byzantine that shows you how big it was and it was as big as the church of the Holy Sepulchre and the shape of the Dome of the Rock as you can see the Armenian altar is here as well Coptic altar And this Syrian altar. And you can see the hooks there. They are building tents there. What you see here is mainly from the Crusader and the Muslim time. This is not less than the Ascension point. When we go backward, you will see every part of it. Ah, what a beautiful picture to take. I'm so happy. And blue sky. It's supposed to be a rainy day. And you can see the minaret of the mosque. That, um, this is the uh, last circle of the Crusaders. Uh, what left from them here is the um, marbles, arches and columns. And each capital is different. Then let's make a run tour around it. It was open. The dome wasn't there and there were no walls. Oh, what's happened here? Look at the beautiful. Don't worry, we will enter soon. Amazing, isn't it? You got a message. The Muslims turn it, oh, this is beautiful, turn it into a mosque. But they believe in the in, in uh, Jesus ascension. Uh, his name in Christianity in uh, Islam is Isa, and he um, um, he wasn't God or son of God. He was a prophet, uh, not the last prophet, because the last prophet is Muhammad. Then they closed the dome. And they turned it into a mask, but then they realized that the Christians really want to pray that too. Then they built another mask next to it, and this is open for uh, Christians and Muslims. Then let's go in. The weather is amazing, it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, 24, 22 degrees Celsius. Then what do you want you to imagine that there were no walls here on the arches? And 
no dome. And at the beginning, there were two, two stones here, rocks here, that's one, and that's the other one. And according to tradition, and this is, I don't know why, Christians, Christians, not others, actually laughing at me. According from, from the 4th century, it actually marked that those are the rocks that Jesus st stood on it. And when he ascended in heaven, he, he, he left um, his print, footprint. Um, don't say no. Accept it as it is. There were two. One, the other one was uh, actually disappeared. We don't know where. Some believe, people believe it from uh, it's in the wrong Vatican. Some people believe that it's at the uh, Al Aqsa Mosque. Uh, some people believe that disciples took some souvenirs. Then I don't know. They, they moved it a little bit and they built a mihrab here. You know, every Muslim that um, prays here. Um, is praying through Mecca, and this is the way to Mecca. Uh, another thing that people used to laugh at me when I uploaded the last video of that church is the donation box. In so many churches that I know, in Jerusalem, all over the world, there is a donation box there. What's wrong with you? Let me put that cross on that energetic stone. Betty, EJ, that's for you, but that is for everyone who believes in Jesus now and watching that video. Amazing, isn't it? I want you to imagine him standing here, together with the 12. Actually, yeah, there were 12 already. Judas wasn't there, but there was another one. Um, and he told them, I will come back from the same spot. Again, I will come back from the same spot. I will say it again, I will come back from the same spot. For me, this is the story. Not only the ascension of Jesus in heaven, the second coming of Jesus will be here. And that is a wonderful thing to remember. Then the disciples were here. And then he ascended into heaven. They couldn't understand it. And two angels, or two people who dress with white, for me, they are angels, told them, what are you doing here? He's not here anymore, but he will come back from some spot. And um, according to the Jews, it might be the place that the high priest used to burn a red, uh, sacrifice a red uh, cow, and they used to purify it the people who mold, who had a uh, illness or something like that, it might be here as well. But I want you to understand that according to Judaism, Jesus, uh, um, the Jewish Messiah, which is now Jesus, will enter to the city from Mount of Olives. According to the Muslims, Allah, this is the mosque. Oh, usually it's, I cannot even see what's happening there. Now you can see the entrance to the mosque. According to the Jews, the Masah will come from here. According to the Muslims, Muhammad will build a bridge between Mount of Olives, we are at Mount of Olives, to Jerusalem, and the Gul disciples will, um, Enter to the city from here. Mount of Olives is the border between Jerusalem and the desert, which is at the other side. And there's so many things that happen on top of it. 
today, their place is mostly Palestinian, but I don't know if you mentioned you saw the Israeli flag there as well. Amazing, isn't it? And we are the only one. We are the only one. You and me. Did you subscribe my channel? No, not yet. Then until the end of that bougainvillea bush and olive tree, I want you to do that. And and if you will push the, if you ring the bell, there's a bell there, uh, you will get the latest videos of mine. Remember, we came from Aloana. I'm so happy that I did it. I woke up today at 5 a.m. to reach that place because I wanted to, uh, all the churches are, are, are open until 12 a.m. Um, and uh, I wanted to visit them. You, you have to see me. I'm smiling like a child now. I'm smiling like I'm actually watching Jesus on the donkey entering Jerusalem. And before we will say goodbye, can you wait with me? I want you to see Jerusalem for Mount of Olives for the first time. Can you wait, please? Good. Um, that area was a Jewish cemetery, and you will see it soon. The Jews believe that then when the Messiah will come, there will be the first one who will who actually will resurrect. I'm so happy. Now the only last church that I hope that it will be open uh, will be Dominus of Love It. Of Love It, the Lord wept. But that will be in a different video that I will take. Or not, I don't know. I will sadly my watch is in my telephone and I don't know what's the time now. And as you can understand, there's not a lot of people to ask. We are at Ar Hameshicha Street. That's where it is Paternoster Church and Ascension Church located. Benedict Nunnery is here. Those nuns, just like the Camelot nun that we visited before, never visit Jerusalem. Now let me tell you something, the Carmelite can see Jerusalem from the place that we saw Jerusalem, not a lot. The nuns, they have the best view of Jerusalem. I uh, visit them uh, from time to time, you can see the entrance to their nunnery. They have an amazing garden. which is worth visiting. But even Mount of Olives, you need more than one day to visit it. There are so many things to see, to see here. That ugly building in front of you is uh, Seven Arches Hotel. The only good thing that I can say about it is that they have the best view of Jerusalem. Are you ready? Are you ready to see the most beautiful view of Jerusalem? Then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, let me run a little bit, 4, 3, 2, that we make it more dramatic. That's the garden that we visit of Padronusser, Alwana. Dididum. 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 Da 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 da. Amazing! I will explain you about uh, the view when we'll sit in Padronusser. Um, church, mainly because the view there is more dramatic than that. 
Can you understand it? More dramatic than that, but a little bit of it. City of David is right there. Um, this is the old city. That is the site of the Jewish temple. Today it's the, uh, it's a mosque. It's an Aqsa mosque. See the mosque is there and this is the, do the dome of the rock is the place of the Jewish temple. Behind it, you can see another dome. Great dome. This is Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And this is the eastern wall of the temple built originally by, by, by King Herod. And you can see the golden dome, a golden gate there. So many, so many things to talk about it. But I want to go into um, Dominus Flavi Church before they will close it there. And um, then we will continue in my next video. Bye-bye uh, to everyone and EJ. I'm in love with your wife. And Betty, I love you. It's um, so amazing to talk with my describers. And you're part of my family now. Thank you very much. Uh, we are now at the Jewish Human Next uh, Video Cemetery out at Mount of Olives from the time of King David until now. And there is a sign that tells us that to the left, there is a tomb of the prophet, of uh, Prophet Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. For the Jews, they are very important um, prophets. They actually say that soon the resurrection or the coming of the Messiah, but not Jesus, will, uh, will happen. And um, for the Christians, they're actually talking about Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, the destruction of the city, and, um, and the death of Jesus on the cross, in a way. And Malachi is the connection between the Old Testament to the New Testament. That's why the book of Matthew is the first one. Uh, although it belongs to the Christian and uh, the Russian, the one who kept that church or the tomb is a, a local family here. Shalom. Hi. Um, I'm a tour guide. Can I? They're calling Jamil. Um, Jamil will let the one who actually keep that place might open it for me. I hope so. We're talking about around 26 tombs. Uh, but let's see. Until he will come, we can actually see the view. Jamil? Ah, what's your name, Jamil? Tell me, I'm going to do a series to my friends in the country. Thank you, Jamil. He will let us go only for five minutes. Then I will bless the cross for you, Betty and EJ. But I have only five minutes. Then we're talking about ancient tombs. I will take a video of it as quick as I can. I will bless it. And then I will talk about it outside. Then let's wait for Jamil. Ah, look at the cat. Uh, one of you, one of the subscribers wrote me that he loves to see uh, videos of cats in the Holy Land. And, um, oh, look at, there are more cats. And they said that uh, they are actually looking for holy mice, mouse. I love that. Thank you, Jamil. And this is another a wonderful place that everyone who watched that video must visit. And when you are visiting, don't forget to donate. Jamil, million to dot. Jamil, nachon? Jamil, don't go ahead. Jamil, the best. No, Jamil. Jamil, Jamil. Mishpachat Otman, but I'm Jamil. Jamil. Achla, family of Otman. Then I do have five minutes from now. Then I'm rushing in. Thank you. I love the smell of caves. Let me get used to the darkness, just like you need to get used to the darkness.
Then let's go there. Oh, difficult. Let's bless it. Twenty six tombs here, twenty six niches like that. Now we'll talk. Yeah, there's no light here, but believe me, there are niches here, and I'm praying that I forgot to bring my flashlight. Then here it is, certainly not a lot to see uh, without a flashlight. Um, and this is the donation box, then don't forget to do that. Let me bless it for for you. Just to show you that we are here, and the tombs of the prophets are here, and here, and the students of the prophets as well. Now, let's climb up. Shukran! I'm very happy to have you. He's a very happy to have you. And he's very happy to have you. Thank you very much, Jamil. And that you'll be happy. Bye bye. He's going to the doctor, and uh, he gave me only five minutes. Well, I did it. Um, um, next time I will bring a flashlight. I'll add a description, I will add information, more information about it, why it's important for the Jews, who actually had a huge fight between them and the Russian, who will buy uh, that land. Uh, the Jews are here and praying a lot, Christians are doing it too, the Russian promise to let everyone pray there, which is good. This is a Jewish cemetery. And uh, the first part, which is here, is the part of people who died here, not here, in the old city, in 1948. 1948, United Nations declared two countries, Israel and Palestine. But at the same time, all the Arab countries invented into Israel. The idea was to delete Israel from the map. The result was that they actually deleted Palestine from the map. But, uh, oh, it's open. Usually it's closed. Let us go in. <laughs> no, it, it is closed. It is? Let me see. No! And uh, and the Jordanians conquered Jerusalem, the old city, which was supposed to be owned by United Nations, not by Israel, and not by Palestine. And... See that one? And those people died in the old city, trying to protect 19. And Nisim Guinea was 10 years when he said, I'm going to protect the city, and he died. They've been buried until 1967 at the old city at the Jewish quarter of today but at 1967 when we came back we buried them here they deserved it there's a memorial site a video that I took about it in the old city and now there's a memorial site here uh, for them next to the terms of the profit.
nice, isn't it? Sad, isn't it? Um, the Jews are here, and they they believe that when their Jewish Messiah will come, and I will say it again, it's not Jesus. Um, they will resurrect. They will be the first one who will resurrect. Then the tombs are from the time of King David until now. When you're entering a Jewish cemetery, please put a hat, cover your head. If you like the video, please subscribe my channel. And um, and I do have more than 19,000 videos, almost about everything. Then uh, there are so many, uh, there's a lot of information and ways to contact me at that um, description of the video. Then see you well, in the next at video. Mount bye -bye. of Olives at the Jewish Cemetery, adding heading to the to Dominus Flavit, the Lord wept. Why? We will talk about it soon. But when you are doing it, use the rail handle. Uh, but I want you to see the Jewish Cemetery. It's from the time of King David until now. The Jews have been buried here for so many hundreds, thousands of years because they believe that when the Jewish Messiah, not Jesus, the Jewish Messiah will come, there will be, there will uh, be the first one who, re who will resurrect. Let me show it to you from here. And you can see the whole city in front of you. We are at Mount of Olives. I will talk about the uh, whole city soon. But first, let's enter to the to Dominus Flavit. The Lord wept. Hey, the door is open because of COVID situation. I'm not sure about the uh, opening time of those churches. Uh, it's usually open between 8 to 11.45 and 2.30 to 5. Now it's open until 11.45. And, and if that door is open, it means that I'm here. Hello, Jerusalem Cross. Hello, Betty. Hello, EJ. And hello, everyone who watching that video. When they started to build their church, they found out tombs. Well, we know that there are so many tombs here. This is a, uh, uh, the most important Jewish cemetery in the world. But what they found here in the necropolis, tombs with names of Christians, Jewish names, like Mary, Joseph, and uh, which were common names for Jews as well. Then at the beginning, they thought that it might be a Jewish, uh, uh, not a Jewish, a Christian, a Jewish cemetery of Christians. Uh, the one who started, who began, uh, um, Jews who convert themselves into Christianity at the time of Jesus. But uh, what they know now that it is a cemetery from the time of Jesus of Jews that have been buried here. Then let's talk a little bit about how they've been buried. You can see the niches. There's one, two, and three in front of you. It used to be a cave. Now, they used to put the bodies in those niches. If there are only three here and there were more, what will happen to the fourth body? I mean, now there's no space for him. They will open the oldest one, they will take the bones out and they will put the bones on those ossuaries and they put the ossuaries in the storeroom. That one is of a small child. Hmm. Sad, isn't it? Well, thinking about the mother and the father of that poor child. You can see how they lock that or they usually put their legs next to the entrance because the Jews believe that the soul is in the body of 
the man for the next for the first three days and maybe he will wake up then he will kick out that door the only thing that left for him to open is the rolling stone um that's why jesus resurrect lazarus and lazarus at the fourth day the soul wasn't there anymore you can imagine you can actually now understand then this is the power of jesus Beautiful, isn't it? Let me just go out without destroying the camera. And there's another necropolis here. And just like I thought, I'm the only one in that church. Let's start with it that until very late, they didn't mention their place as Dominus Flavit, as the Lord wept. But if you ask me, where is the best place to look at Jerusalem and to cry, this is the site. Then it doesn't matter for me if it was like 20 meters to the right, 200 meters to the left. What for me is important, that he did it at Mount of Olives. I'm sure that was very close to here. We will talk about the view soon. But let me see, and, uh, and I can see now that there's no mass here, there. Then I will be able to go into the place with my camera. No hats, of course. It was built by Berlucci at the 40s. I'm talking about the uh, 20th century, 1955, sorry. And uh, look at that window. What, wait, 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 what's happening here? The apse is facing to the west? Of course it is. It's the regular church. And this is the difference between the churches at the Holy Land and the churches uh, in your country. The churches here is on top of Jesus' stories. Jesus' stories. Unbelievable, isn't it? You can see here a beautiful mosaic floor of a chapel that used to be here at the 7th century and it was facing to the east like every other church. You can see that the mosaic is actually in good quality and there's a lot of agricultural science on it that may be connected to the agriculture place that used to be here. Let's go to Berlucci. The uh, chapel, which is one of the most beautiful and simple. And before we'll talk about it, and someone will kick me out, I want you to see the most important part. That church is facing to Jerusalem because Jesus was crying when he saw Jerusalem. And look at the cross and the temple. Well, now we can see the. You cannot see the temple. Now we can see the temple. Amazing. Please go, don't disturb that video. Let them go. Let them go. They're not going. Sorry. Here, there's another evidence of a, even an earlier church, fourth century church. We don't know what it was, what it was dedicated to, but not, not that it wasn't dedicated to um, Dominus Flavit. And you can see the altar, and that is facing 
again to the east. And Berlucci actually used this part of the floor. I mean, he said, if this is more important for me, then why should I destroy it, of course? You can see it all over. What I can see on top? You can see the most beautiful dome. It looks like a teardrop, but upside down. And this is gold because Jesus is the sun. And you can see Jesus entering into the city. Wait a minute. And he's crying. He said from here, one day soon, someone will come make a siege around you and he will destroy the city. Horrible, isn't it? And that's happened at 70 AD when the Romans came and destroyed the city. Um, on the other side, here, you can see the women of Jerusalem looking at Jesus and Mary was there as well. The Jews are looking at him, wondering what's happening here, and the destruction of the temple. Another important issue here for me is that again from the Bible he said I tried I tried to collect you together just like a chicken will collect their chicks but you didn't let me. You didn't let me do that. Dominus flavid. The Lord wept. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because this is the first time that I'm here and there's no one here. And that church was closed for so many months because of COVID-19. I'm so happy that I'm doing it for you. Until we reach the viewpoint, let me tell you that if you want to reach me, talk to me. You can do that via uh, that um, YouTube channel uh, or yeah, the description you will find some information about, information about the, the um, place but you will find my um, links for my Instagram and Facebook. I'm actually sending there a lot of uh, articles and pictures that I'm taking and of course the videos and there's a new link that say uh, for my buy me coffee. Some of you ask me to do that because you want to support me and my ego didn't let me do that until I reach my bank. I'm not working for more than almost two years. And um, because of you, I'm guiding. You make me happy. You are my family now until the tourists will come. And the uh, rumor said that the mid of November, tourists will come, but there's so many no, 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 that I'm not sure. I'm not sure that if you want to support me, I will be more than happy, but I will be happy to be with you. And the one who support me, you can ask me to light the candles for you at uh, the church. And for example, I'm, um, blessing uh, crosses or else, something else that I'm buying for you and sending for you together with a video and this is for EJ and Betty this is my way to help you and this is your way to help me and and it works beautifully wow let's find a sit and we will talk about the view from here. Usually there's benches there, but I don't see anything. Then we will sit here. Let me put my hat on. Just a moment, please. Here, Jesus, watch Jerusalem. Before we will talk about the view, let's talk a little bit about that um, cemetery, Jewish cemetery. In 1967, the Jordanians 
Kong uh, occupied Palestine. That was supposed to be part of Palestine. And a lot of the Jewish cemetery been destroyed by that. They used a tombstone for their houses, roads. And uh, 1967, when we came back, we started to bring back all those um, uh, tombstones back to their places. Thanks God that we know of every tomb of this place. And now let's talk about it. We are at Mount, Mount of Olives. What we can see from there is the old city. This is the eastern wall of the temple, built originally by King Herod. And you can see the golden gate there, according to what we, we know, that the high priest, the Jewish high priest, used to go out from here to Mount of Olives. Uh, um, and uh, Jesus entered Palm Sunday to the temple from there. Today, um, the Temple Mount is a Muslim place, but before we will talk about it, let's talk about the Jewish place. The Dome of the Rock is on top of Mount Moriah, according to the Jews, and, um, and the first stone, the foundation stone was there, the um, tomb of Adam and Eve, according to the Jews, were there, and the place that Abraham sacrificed Isaac. There's a lot of wind. I hope that you will hear me. I'm trying to hide the wind, but it's it's excellent. It's better than 40 degrees. It's only um, 22 degrees. It's a little bit chilly. I love that. Then um, then later on, God told the Jews to build his uh, uh, temple on top of it. Then the Jewish temple that was built by King Solomon, and later on, you know, the temple of King Herod was built there. King Herod wanted to impress, and uh, the man Moriah, which is that stone, is too small for that. And what he did, he destroyed everything that was around it. He built four walls to build a podium, um, um, plaza. And on top of it, he built the Jewish temple, which was between two to three times higher than the Dome of the Rock. That temple had been destroyed seven, uh, 70 AD, the first century, um, just after. Uh, Jesus ascended into heaven and for so many years no one used it. At the 7th century the Muslims arrive here and according to the night journey of Muhammad um, he went from Mecca straight to Al-Aqsa Mosque. Can you see it? Ah, here it is. And he walked through there to the foundation stone, ascended into heaven and he got the five prayers of a day. Then although it's um, uh, it's only the third important place for the Muslims, it's still an important place for the Muslims. And from the 7th century, you can see here the uh, Dome of the Rock, and around it is the Muslim quarter, which is the biggest quarter here. Um, another important thing that you must know that the, the other side of the Eastern Wall, something there, but the other side is the Western Wall Plaza. The Western Wall Plaza is another wall of uh, the plaza that King Herod built, but it's if you've been there, it's a small, small place. It's uh, uh, because it most of the Muslim quarter is built on it, but it originally was as long as that. Um, City of David. Can you see the corner right there? That's where the devil tested Jesus. He told him to jump. And uh, Jesus said, um, I mean, I mean the, the devil said, uh, if you believe in God, he will catch you. But Jesus says, we are not trying God. The other side of it is the awful. And that, uh, the, my finger is there, is City of David. That's where everything began. City of David will be next week. I, I will actually uh, prepare another amazing video about it then uh, uh, you will be able to see it. But I do have so many videos. I do have 19,000 videos, remember? Then, then, then a lot of them of City of David, including two important uh, videos. One of them is of a street that now we know that Pontus Pilate built. Then if you want, if you cannot find it, uh, ask me and I will send you a link for that. Why are you using the horn? What's happened? Um, let's climb up with the road 
and the biggest church there is actually Mount Zion. Mount Zion is where King David was buried, the room of the Last Supper, the tomb of Oscar Schindler from Schindler List, and uh, the House of Mary. And what you see there is the House of Mary. To the right is the Jewish quarter. You will recognize it with the white dome of the synagogue. Um, let's continue to the left, to the right, to the left of the dome. You can see a white tower. This is um, the Redeemer Church, a Lutheran church. But to the right of it, you can see the church of the Holy Sepulcher. That's where Jesus was crucified, buried, died, and resurrected. To the right, I can show you another green area. And this is the garden tomb. That is where Jesus was buried, uh, crucified, buried, and resurrected. What? Like two stories? Same stories? Two places? Yes. Uh, the 19th century, um, some of the Protestants say that the Jews cannot be buried inside the city, which is true. See, this is the Jewish cemetery outside the city. Um, then it cannot be that the tomb of Jesus will be in the um, center of the city. I'm not going to argue if it's true or not. Then they look for another place and they found a place that looked like a skull. And tomorrow, I'm going to prepare a video for another one who bought um, Rosa, um, a Jerusalem cross. And uh, the tour will be, according to what he asked, from the tomb to the tomb. Amazing, isn't it? Um, what else we can actually find here? Yes, yeah, soon I will leave that place and I will continue. Yeah, now they have to cut the grass. The Garden of Gethsemane, which is down there. But this is Mary Magdalene Church, a Russian church, which is a um, beautiful church, but not connected to the story of Mount of Olives. Although, um, according to what we know, the tomb of Mary was there as well. Then uh, she ascended into heaven uh, from that tomb. Then there is a connection in a way. And because they're cutting the grass now in front of me, they couldn't wait another five minutes. We will say goodbye and don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you want to know more, then please ask me. Thank you. We are living bye now bye. Um, Dominus Flavit, the Lord Web Church. Look at the beautiful olive trees that no one harvest. Mainly because of Corona, whatever, then certainly. Um, usually they are selling it or giving it to churches to produce uh, oil, olive oil. And we are heading to Garden of Gethsemane. Now you see a lot of olive trees here. But when you are turning olive fruit into olive oil, you need a factory for that. In Hebrew, it's called Gethsemane. In English, we call it Gethsemane. Then all those horrible, strange names are usually uh, Jewish names. Mount of Olives, in that part, is a huge cemetery. Jewish cemetery. Oh, a police car. And the funny thing is that this is a two-way road. Two-way road. Can you believe it? Then the Jews believe that when the Messiah will come, I'm talking about the Jewish Messiah, not Jesus, there will be the first one who will resurrect. And there are tombs from the time of Jesus, sorry, time of King David until now. Down the valley, you see the top, wait a minute, you can see the top of Absalom tomb, son of King David. Da da da, it's here. Let me take a picture of it, it's beautiful from here. But we are heading as quick as I can to Garden of Gethsemane because the garden will be closed soon. And I'm here uh, for the request of a wonderful couple, EJ and Bethy. Um, we are doing now 
together Palm Sunday procession. Then I visit so many places. Um, and I want to reach the Garden of Gethsemane before they will close it because I want to bless the Holy uh, Cross of Jerusalem. Um, if you want me to do that as well, uh, the link for that, uh, sorry, uh, the description of that video, which is usually below, beneath the video, uh, you will find the link for buy me a coffee. And there you will get some information about how should you will get your uh, cross together with um, a video that I made for it. It's not like just cross that you can buy without me, but I'm going to bless it for you uh, in so many holy sites. Today it's a Palm Sunday procession. Oh, look how beautiful it is. Jewish cemetery. Then, usually the factory for a, um, f you know, a factory of uh, of um, making olive oil from olive fruit is at the bottom of um, the place because to carry it up, not easy. Two-way road, got it. Then we are heading there. The story is amazing. Uh, Jesus was at Mount. Oh, what's wrong? Everything was, everything was okay? It didn't answer me. Then it looks like, I don't know, but it looks like okay. Then let's pray together that that man um, is okay. He didn't understand me. Maybe he doesn't speak English or Hebrew. But as you can see, the cars are stopping there to see if it needs help. Maybe climb up. And this is difficult. Next time, don't climb up. Just walk down, just like me. Then um, Jesus was at Mount Zion, the room of the Last Supper, when he said, let's go. But before that, he said, one of you will betray me. Another thing that he said, uh, but I will die, and three days later, I will resurrect. Then they left Mount, of, uh, Mount Zion, which is not so far away. I wanted to stop next to that man that I don't know what's happened to him, to show you Mount Zion, but I'm not sure that it was proper. But it's not so far away. It's like, um, let's say, 10 minutes walking, 15 for me, because I don't like to rush. Oh, you can see there, just climb up to Mount of Olives, maybe, to visit the cemetery. And um, you can see the walls of Jerusalem for you, and the Dome of the Rock, which is the site of the Jewish temple at the time of Jesus, uh, he saw the temple. The temple was between two to three times higher than the Dome of the Rock, then you can understand that he could see the temple from here. And um, after he finished uh, the Last Supper, which I believe that was Passover meal, that's the reason he came to Jerusalem, although some of the Christians believe that it was the day before, and that's why the Holy Bread, it's bread for the uh, Christian, for example, for the Catholic, it's uh, matzah bread. Um, then he went to there and he asked uh, his three disciples to pray with him. One of them was St. Peter, but those fell asleep, fell asleep three times. He woke them up. I was a little bit mad about uh, St. Peter. How can it be that you are uh, falling asleep? Your master needs you. But then my mother, a Jewish woman, it's, it's difficult for me to talk about my mother because of two months ago she was alive, but now she died. Then my mother looked at me and said, come on, Sachi, it's a Passover meal. In Passover meal, the Jews are eating too much. 
they are praying and singing until midnight and they drink they need to drink at least four glasses of wine then at least you know what's happened after that then the situation the result is drunk and tired That column is in the front of um, Mary Magdalene Church and look how beautiful it is because it's from Matthew 26, 40, 41. Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Then this we, we just talked about it. We just talked about it. Wow. Then, in that matter, an angel came to pray with Jesus, and this is the Garden of Gethsemane uh, Church from the other side. This is the, uh, we are facing to the west, but the, the apse now is facing to the east. And um, it's a happy story for me. It's, it's not easy for me. Uh, to talk about it. It's like they are betraying him. But they didn't know that they are betraying him. They didn't know what will happen to Jesus. And um, an angel came to talk with him. And then Jesus said, take that cup of me. I don't want it. And this is, is nature. I mean, human nature. But then say, but this is my job. I'm going to do that. I mean, without that, there's no Christianity. Then let's enter to the church. And as I believe, I'm going to be one of the few. We will enter. Mashlomcha. Yad, yad, yad. Kif lirot otcha. Ah, they're everything now. Finally, <laughs> he said that I've got fed a lot. Yeah, that's what happens when you're not guiding. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, the earliest thing. Oh, this is an amazing video now. Those are the most important trees. That's where Jesus was praying. Another everything, the, the fruit. Thanks God for that. Every fruit here is important. Oh, someone is on the tree shaking the branches let me see yeah here it is here is here is it and then the fruit falls into the carpet in a way and then and, and then they collect it amazing Ta -da -da. Let's continue the story. Look at the Bungavilla. And before we will continue the story, uh, if it's your first video of mine and you didn't subscribe my channel, please do that now and ring the bell there and you will get my latest video. Um, and more than that, I do have more than 19,000 videos and you can ask me whatever you want. Look how beautiful is the eastern wall of the Jewish temple and you can see the um, eastern, the golden gate. Jesus enters through there, through Palm Sunday procession. This is amazing. This is amazing.
no hat snow. We are reaching the church. Then, in that case, Judas came together with the priests and together with the Romans and he kissed Jesus. By that kiss, he betrayed Jesus. The agony begins here. Then that's why the name of their church, one of the names of their church is the Agony Church. The second name is All Nation Church because it was built by 12 nations. And I call it Garden of Gethsemane Church because this is the site of it. Inside the church, I will be as quiet as I can. But uh, I will actually show you the roof. And you can see that there are so many small domes. And uh, you will be part of the Garden of Gethsemane video uh, scene. Um, I will show you a floor from the 4th century because that church is from the 19th century. Uh, and I will show you where Jesus was, was actually praying the rock that he was on top of it. But look at that. My father, if it would be possible, let me, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Matthew 26. The energy here is so strong. Then, let's go in. The first church was from the 4th century, the second one is from the 12th century, and you're looking at the modern church, which is an amazing one. You can see that tree, one of the olive trees, and you are part of that garden now. Quite dark here, agony, midnight. Look at the domes. Let's continue. That is beneath the glass is the fourth century church. And they looked they want to build an amazing church of um, Dominus Flavit, used the same floor. Because he said that that floor is more important than my floor. Another option. And we are now entering to the most important part. This is the rock that Jesus was praying on it. The energy there is so strong. The agony of Jesus, look at him. Sorry. Come on. That mosaic, the mosaic wall will tell, show you the betrayal of Judas. Judas kiss. I 
I will let you now pray for two minutes and then I will continue the video then go don't go please don't don't leave me Let's continue with our tour. But before that, remember, if you want to ask me questions, you can. Uh, through that video, in the description, you will find um, my Instagram and Facebook. I'm talking about the professional one. The private one is in Hebrew. You won't understand it anyhow. Um, look at that tree. It was planted by the Pope. In 2014 and you can see the differences between a tree from 2014 to a 300 years old tree or even more than that some people believe that it's almost I don't know I'm afraid to talk about the age of those trees because there's so many theories but let me tell you something if you'll cut an olive tree it will grow again if you'll cut it again it will grow again cut it again you know what will happen then in that case they will never die that tree is another important tree but before we will talk about it this is the same rock that you saw in the church and usually because it's out of the church uh, this is the place for the rest of the um, Christian because then we are talking about the Catholic Church but everyone visit that church, everyone believes in that side, then everyone can pray here as well. And I, I don't see the difference between Christians. I know that I'm getting a lot of response from you. That one are not, that one are not the real. Everyone are real. Everyone's got their own way to worship God. It's a Whitman. But from Basildstone, it's not from here, it's from the Galilee. Remember, two women will do that. One will stay with me, one not. That was told in Capernaum. And this is a tree from 1964, planted by, by the Pope, San Paolo. And um, 
Uh, now we can, can, can see the difference between 1964 tree to older trees. That's still everything. The olive tree. If it's okay by you, I'm making a round tour. I'm going to see if if we can see something better than that. I want you to understand how the they are shaking the branches and the olive fruit falls into that I call it present. And then they collect it. It's very easy to collect it. It is. See, they are hitting the um, branches. Do it gently. Usually, if they want to do that in the regular way, they are shaking the tree. But here, they are trying to do that in a nice way. Because we are talking about holy trees. See the olive fruit are falling to that present the curtain, whatever, carpet. And then so easy to collect it. In the center you can see it and from that they will prepare olive oil and that is Garden of Gethsemane meaning. Garden of Gethsemane is the place that you are turning olive into olive oil from olive fruit. And I saw the hour, the sun is in our eyes now, but I saw some olive fruit on the tree, but here they already harvested. Let me look for one. Here it is. Let me see if you can be, if you will be able to see it, because it's difficult for me. Can you see it? Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. They forgot it. Everesting the olive tree. Garden of Gethsemane. I mean, it is amazing. I'm smiling like a child. Bethy, EJ, you made my day, and my beautiful subscribers. It's like one big family in time without work. See. Bye, shukran. God, God. There's another garden for Mao Masses services. And the name God Semani is above it. Amazing, isn't it? I'm so happy, I'm so happy, then um, see you in my next video, bye bye. We are at Jerusalem, the slopes of um, Garden of, uh, of uh, Mount of Olives, we just, I just left Garden of Gethsemane, which is right there. And what you actually saw now is uh, the Tomb of Mary. I do have a problem with it because I'm sure that you will tell, I'll tell me, ah, oh, we've been in episodes and we saw in Turkey the tomb of Mary, the house of Mary. Yes, we know that part of the Catholic believes in it and the uh, story is about a vision that a nun had to saw in the 19th century. We know that when Jesus was crucified, he asked, um, he asked, um, John to take care of his mother and John according to what we know went to Asia 
and Turkey of today. Then, as some believe, he took Mary with him. But that is true for some of the Christians. I must say that the house of Mary and the place that she fell asleep, which is a Catholic place, is uh, at Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Um, and until the 19th century, everyone believed in it. And I'm um, a blessing here at the Jerusalem Cross for Betty and EJ. If you want me to do that, just enter to this. Uh, uh, description of the video and you will see a link for buy me a coffee and there you will find all the details. Um, I love that place. Today it belongs to the Armenian and the Greek Orthodox but this story is an amazing story and, uh, and, and the Christians believe it, I mean the Catholic believes me too. Uh, Protestant, not so sure. Um, it actually tells us that Mary was on top of Mount of Olives when she met Gabriel, who told her, Mary, you're gonna fall asleep, slash die, whatever you will choose, in about three days. And then she asked all the disciples who'd been uh, in Jerusalem at that time to be with her. And at the third day, she fell asleep. Jesus took her soul immediately. And then three days after they buried her here, he took her body. What you're going to see here is a crusader church, a remain of a crusader church. Sadly, uh, the upper church has been destroyed by the Muslims, but because they believe in Mary, there's the two chapters to delegate to Mary in the Quran, they didn't destroy her tomb. Ta -da -da. Then there are two options. I, I'm here, then I always choose the, the Jerusalem option. What you see is a Catholic uh, crusader facade. And let's get used to the darkness because there are 49 stairs that we have to walk down. Look how beautiful it is. two chapels here. The first one belongs to the mother and father of Mary, again according to the proto evangelion of James, that tells us the story of the beginning and the end of Mary. That's the tomb of Joachim, and that's the tomb of Anna. And according to the, another tradition, the other chapel belongs to Joseph, Joseph of Mary from Nazareth. Let me see if it works. Lights. I hope that he won't kill me. Then you can see it. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. I hope that he won't. He will let me take a video. I will be quiet next time. Thank you, sorry. Look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful it is. This is the empty tomb of Mary. I 
hope that you can hear me. Um, you can see the Assumption of Mary. And here she fell asleep and Jesus took her soul. And this is her tomb. And again, I'm the only one here. Ouch. Muslims and men may believe they will have her too, then they build a mihab here. The more tombs here in the church. This is one of the most famous Marys ever in, for the Greek Orthodox. Such a beautiful place. Lots of energy here. Lots of energy in that amazing place. This is the exit of the tomb. Let's just climb all those stairs again. Thanks God that you didn't really kill me for what I did. Just wanted you to see the tomb of uh, Joseph according to Greek Orthodox and Armenian. Remember Joseph, Anna and Joachim? One day it belongs to the Greek Orthodox, <laughs> which is today. The other day it belongs to Armenian. Then Ruby, this is your video as well. Ruby from Australia. You see the Armenian flag, Greek Orthodox, Armenian Hachkar, and the church. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe me. And if you do have some questions, don't, don't hesitate. Ask me, and I will try to answer. Um, until now, I think I answer. 99.9% .9 of the questions. You can reach me via Facebook and Instagram. And one important thing, last thing. If you want to support me, I'm not working for two years, then uh, there's a link for buy me a coffee. And uh, if you'll do that, uh, you can ask me to light a candle for you at the church or to put a note at the Western Mall. Uh, thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye.